it's Thomas here, and today we're going to be taking a look at Seachem's Reef Status Strontium Test Kit. If you are in the pursuit of the best possible growth from your SPS and LPS corals and want to explore maintaining natural or elevated strontium levels in your reef tank and need a test kit capable of reading strontium 10 times more precisely than competing test kits using quality components neatly packed in a hard case for safe storage, then check out Seachem's Reef Status Strontium. Plus, I'm going to show you how to perform this test. It's definitely one of the more interesting tests that I've done. So let's get to it. Strontium is an element found in seawater that has a similar molecular shape to calcium and magnesium and appears to play a similar role in the building of aragonite coral skeletons as well as in the bones, shells, and bodies of other marine organisms. While it is still up for some debate, many have reported that maintaining natural levels or even elevated levels of strontium in our reef tanks can lead to accelerated growth of LPS and SPS corals and lower than natural levels can actually cause coral growth to slow. While many reefers will likely be just fine maintaining their strontium levels through frequent water changes, those of us with high growth SPS tanks or densely packed LPS tanks are likely to find our strontium levels are lower than natural seawater and could benefit from dosing strontium. And like any other element we dose to our reefs, best practice is to test for it first so you know what your reef strontium level is, whether or not you actually need to raise it, and if you do, by how much. For example, if you're not currently dosing strontium, but you already dose a trace element, that trace element additive could already have strontium in it. The last thing you wanna do is also dose strontium, raise it way too high, which could have negative effects, which is why you wanna test first. Strontium, however, isn't that easy to test for, and there are only a handful of options available to reefers. ICP testing is definitely the easiest, but it isn't the most economical option if you want to test frequently and dose accordingly to keep strontium levels in that natural range of seven to nine parts per million. Strontium test kits are another option, but many can only read in increments of five parts per million, making it difficult to dose precisely and keep your reef within that natural range of seven to nine. Seachem's Reef Status Strontium is a high quality test kit designed for reef aquarists who want to keep tabs on their strontium levels to maintain it at a natural or elevated level to encourage accelerated coral growth. It can read strontium in tiny 0.5 part per million increments, which is much more precise than other strontium test kits and includes a reference solution so you can validate your own testing practices and make sure you're getting accurate results. And it all comes neatly packed in a hard case with a rubber gasket, which is a nice touch. In the hard case, you'll find strontium reagents number one through five, as well as the strontium titrant and the strontium reference solution. You also get a sample vial, graduated pipette, non-graduated pipette, separation column, separation column plunger, micro scoop, collection vial and cap, as well as your color chip and the titration syringe. Before we dive into how this test is performed, which I'm going to show you, it is important to mention that reagent number one is a very strong acid and Seachem includes some simple personal protection equipment for you to wear while performing the test. The bottle of reagent one comes stored inside of an extra container filled with vermiculite and a neutralizing agent just in case it leaks in transit. So be diligent when performing the test and keep some baking soda on hand just in case you spill or drip the reagent by accident. The test isn't difficult to perform and it only takes about 10 minutes, but it does have some more interesting steps than your average test kit and may take a practice test or two before you've nailed down the procedure. Seachem included a reference solution for this very reason so you can test your skills at performing the strontium test and make sure you're getting accurate results before testing your tank. It does make you feel like a bit of a scientist though, which is kind of fun. Before you get started, get some fresh RODI water, your personal protective equipment, a little bit of baking soda just in case, and clear a surface to perform the test. This strontium test kit has six stages that include pre-wetting, absorption, wash, elution, then adding reagents, and finally titrating. The very first step is to pre-wet the graduated syringe that has a white cotton-like filtration material inside of it. This syringe is referred to as the separation column. Rinse out the non-graduated pipette with RODI water, then fill the separation column to the one milliliter mark, then use the plunger to flush the water through the separation column. Bottom out the plunger into the cotton-like filtration material, but don't use excessive force so you don't accidentally pack it down or compress it. 
Next, use the graduated pipette to measure out one milliliter of sample water from your aquarium, or if you're testing your own proficiency with the test kit, you can use the reference solution as your sample and then add the sample to the vial. Then fill the non-graduated pipette with strontium number one and add it to the sample. With the collection vial cap firmly attached, place the separation column firmly into the hole and use the non-graduated pipette to transfer the sample from the small pink vial into the separation column. You'll likely need to give it a moment to begin draining in order to fit all of the sample into the separation column. Don't push the sample through and allow it to drain on its own. While the sample finishes dripping, you can move on to making the wash solution. Rinse the sample vial and both pipettes thoroughly with RODI water. Then repeat the previous steps using RODI instead of sample water, adding one milliliter of RODI and strontium one to the sample vial. By now, the separation column should be finished dripping, which is indicated by there being no more liquid above the white filtration material. Next, add the wash solution you just prepared in the sample vial to the separation column. Then use the plunger to push the water through. It should take less than five seconds to flush the wash solution all the way through that filtration material. Once completed, you can discard the liquid in the collection vial. Yes, I know at first that seems counterintuitive, but the strontium is going to be collected inside of that separation column. And the next step, which is elution, is getting the strontium back into a liquid so that we can test for it. First, rinse both vials and the non-graduated pipette thoroughly with RODI water, then hold the separation column over top of the sample vial and using the graduated pipette, add RODI water to the separation column and push it through with the plunger. Repeat the process, adding more RODI water until the sample vial is filled right to the top. Once it is full, dump the sample vial into the collection vial. Now we're on to the fifth and sixth stages and they are going to be very familiar. Add one scoop of reagent two and gently shake until dissolved, then add two drops of reagent three and mix, then one drop of reagent four and mix, lastly one drop of reagent five and a final mix. Let the sample sit for two minutes, then fill the titration syringe to the one milliliter line with titration solution, place the collection vial onto the color chip, and add one drop at a time, shaking between each drop until the solution changes from light blue to the darker blue on the color chip. Then take note of how much titration solution you've used, compare it to the chart, and you've got your strontium reading. Now you can use your strontium additive of choice and accurately dose your reef tank. If you are the kind of person who really likes to get into the nitty gritty of reef chemistry and understand every little relationship and aspect between all of these elements and molecules in the water, you can check out this series right here on Mastering Reef Chemistry. Ryan does a phenomenal job of going into even simple things like the makeup of water, just H2O, and how that affects your tank, along with pH, calcium, alkalinity, all of it. So have a watch. You are going to go on a really geeked out reef journey with that series. I know I did. And uh, if this is something you're interested in afterwards, I say go for it because, you know, unexplored territory, maximum growth, why not?